damn, you know, this guy looks like that dude that was up on a praises stream when they, they were doing that discussion about me maybe five months ago. It's like, damn, you know, this this is that dude. About he had you? the same image. You were talking about you? Yeah, y'all didn't see that. No, if if they, they don't like, like they you, I did, like, um, I like you already. If they don't like you, <laughs> well, well, they they did like two back to back seven hour streams about me. Oh I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. There's I only so many as best I can. I mean, I I have disagreements with your views or whatever, obviously, but we have similar sorts of uh, way of uh, understanding of the text. So when people talk smack right. about you, I usually uh. Hey, well, you, well one thing is, I would agree with you about that they have a problem with. So. Hey, well, I'll say this, Jamie. Even though we had different views about some subjects, we can definitely come to agreement that these free gracers are like the furthest thing from the truth that there are, basically. So you know, hey, I give you respect and credit that you know you're coming against these guys, man. Because the truth is, most people just want to go along with that free grace and not talk against it. So the amount of us who do speak against it is definitely, you know, few in number. Yeah, I think really it's a real comfort zone. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. I think it's a real comfort zone. I can't, I grew up Catholic and uh, at, at one point going to Catholic school, grade school, we were going to church, a mass uh, four, four times a week. And then Sunday, you know, or maybe Saturday if you're a golfer, but the, the, the repetition, that, that's what, that's what I came to understand was the evil sense of it. Yeah. My, so like, I made I, it's so obviously false. So I, I hate to the free grace. Like I think God offers grace and it's free or whatever. If, we're talking, if someone's watching this, it's, it's their antinomian, uh, approach to salvation. And then they'll, um, they're they're hijacking of righteousness by faith and justification by faith um and uh which i think is demeaning on god and doesn't take sin seriously enough and they always just appeal to sort of pastoral concerns that people have which i am i'm totally down with i'm just saying like first of all it's like even even if even if like i have hope for people like that they'll be saved and everything that um god takes into account like circumstances but for me, it's like there are kind of often I've realized because I can I some of the things they talk about, like people struggle with um, feeling like accepted or whatever, I think is not necessarily unreasonable, like on a pastoral level. And so but but the question is, for me, is like they're coming at it from like a pastoral thing, which I don't they don't actually realize I actually largely agree with a lot of that. But this is what I don't agree with is what does the text say? Because because we can there's like kind of two layers to that. It's like. First of all, let's present what God presented in the text, and then we can spec. But then we can like con consider like how to deal with people that are struggling or whatever. I think that's good. I would just say like part of part of like what the prophets talk about too is like ideal statements. I think we have such a bad approach to like a lot of stuff. It's like God is it's, it's a sin because because it's hurtful to you and others. It's not just like God looking to want to strike people down. And I think He's going to take that into consideration. It seems that Jesus really hates hypocrites more than He hates. Uh, people who are sinners but of course because that misunderstanding about sin and god's intention towards us and his love and the people get abused by other te teachers like in their church or whatever and they they think it's actually like god's law is the problem and it's like no you got you don't don't think like don't uh, don't approach that with the same idea of how you've been used by people because usually it's those people that are are make up their own rules and are like condemning and secretly hoarding yeah, all. Yeah, like, like Jamie, a good thing to add on to that is recently, like two days ago, I just did a debate with uh, Perry Green over on the Signs of Wonders channel. And um, one of the things he brings up during the discussion is like, well, hey, look, ETT is trying to lead you to sin by teaching you to keep God's law. And then I was like, well, how how does that make sense? How could I be leading people to sin by teaching them to keep God's law? First of all, Christ taught to keep the law. So by logic, he must say that Christ was leading to sin. And then second of all, 1 John 3, 4 says that sin is the transgression of God's law. So by what form of logic could by teaching people to keep the law be leading them to sin? And then you ask him and he's like, oh, uh, next question. You know, because it has no has no clue. But apparently to most people in the comments, I would be considered as the bad guy. But that dude, he's 
he is the good guy, even though he makes himself equal to Christ himself. It's it's amazing to me how brain dead some of these free gracers are and antinomians. It's really amazing. Yeah, well, it really is the fulfillment of uh, calling evil good and good evil. And, high, you know, like First Timothy says, like, it's like, um, uh, you know, let me pull it up real quick. It says... Uh, and while you're pulling that up, I also want to point out most of these uh, free graces and antinomians that usually like 90 percent of the time, they also believe in once saved, always saved as well. I typically find that to be the yeah. case. I, I don't know about you, but I oh, yeah. typically see that. Now, I think people that at least know there is a supreme being are have they're, they're 20 or older. They they're tired of the million denominations, the of Christianity, let alone the outside religions, we kind of you said so, twenty. So they're looking for answers, but they think that it's sitting in a pew. So then, when they finally hear that, oh, all you need is to do is believe for a millisecond, and you can continue on your way. I think that's very ear tickling to them. It's a final solution on. I really don't feel like I have to do anything. I feel like he saved me. I feel like all I have to do is help an old lady across the street and love my neighbor or something along those lines. They, they don't have a clarity. And so when they come along and say, oh, just this, you're cool, that's very ear tickling and, 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 very, and should be very, and, and his popularity just, uh, exploded. People loved it. People loved hearing it. And it just makes me so sick. I think I differ from all three of y'all that I don't believe anybody's saved until the, the resurrection. But so I don't have any. But but I can talk the game with these people. You you think you're once you, once saved, always saved is exactly like, oh, what was it, Jamie? Uh, uh, not Deuteronomy. Acts 14. Uh, uh, Acts 15. Uh, once circumcised, always saved. We've been through down this road before. Yeah, yeah. There's a new twist. Get them on circumcised. Just, just get them to affirm this promise. That you do the thing. Just do the thing, just, and they're in. Yeah, get get circumcised for a millisecond, and you're in like Flint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like, let me give you an example. Like when I did my video in response to praise, I gave them a real life example. Now, I'll mention it here. I've known a buddy of mine for many years and he was a christian for like say a solid five years always went to church and stuff like that but then guess what now he rejects christ and now he is a hindu so now he worships like 300 gods and christ isn't included among them so my question to them was apparently he must still forever be saved because he was a true believer for half a decade but now he's clearly an unbeliever so by their logic they would have to say that he's still going to heaven, even though he rejects Christ. And then they he's validated my heaven. statement because he's multiple people. Yeah, he's still going to heaven. Quick, multiple he's people. Yeah, multiple Earth. people he's from uh, Jack Smack's Smack channel. They came over and they were like, yes, your friend is absolutely saved 100%, even if they worship the devil and uh hindu gods it's amazing to me but it shows the a lot of brainwashing he is ultimately saved but right now he is out of fellowship they cat there's three different categories here on earth he's out of fellowship with christ he's going to lose some rewards in the afterlife but he is definitely ultimately saved so he could say right here on earth terrestrial they call it um uh, uh positional excuse me uh he is has eternal security in mind and at the resurrection he will be <laughs> Save forever and get less rewards because he lost fellowship joining the Hindus. No, I'm giving you. Tell me if I'm lying, Jamie. I I don't bear false witness. No, that's absolutely no. I. So here's the thing about this. It's one thing to wonder about like how God will judge people because of their circumstances. So the Bible has has this idea that there that God. There's a lot of implications to this statement too. By the way, if you think about it, God is going to judges people according to the light that they have. There's so many implications to making that statement along with God's holiness. And um, so I think people need to understand something that was very insightful for me that makes a lot of sense is that, so a lot of times it's a it's a hard issue, but it's still, it's not simply that. It's also, uh, th that, that idea would be something like, there, you make an ideal statement, uh, like what, what, all things being perfect, 
this is what the right thing is. And then like not caring about someone and like always looking for a way to, to show them that they're not holding the standard so, so that you to, like uh, discourage them uh, is not the point. But like the ideal statement is like, this is the, the perfection or whatever, and like it represents the holiness of God. So, but the, the problem with what they're doing is they're looking for like the mercies of God uh, in certain circumstances and then jumping on it and making that um, uh, the, as though the Bible is saying that that's the case in every sen sense of uh, every circumstance, right? right? So like we can we can wonder about the mercy of God and like the, the, the times where God shows like extended mercy and like we don't we can't really judge people the same way God does. That can all still be true. But at the same, but the thing is, they want to turn like the Bible in every circumstance is flip what it's actually saying and, and pretend like it's not, you know, saying like God is requires perfect holiness and oh, that's just fellowship. It's not like it's a, a crucial thing. And to me, that's what makes me upset about it because they're actually like making the Bible say something by being inconsistent with the way they're interpreting it. And then like going around telling everybody, uh, you know, this is how you're supposed to end it. Uh, and like literally veiling what it's actually saying and then they calling every, and then but the, these people are sometimes the most condemning people too. Like if you don't believe it like this, then. Oh yeah. You, you know what saved. I find funny, Jamie, this has to be mentioned. Say for instance, right. Jack Smack will be on there condemning every single person. That's not free grace to hell forever. But then the audience will say, well, ETT is like so judgmental and so unreasonable. But yet their leaders on there literally condemning every other person to hell for eternity forever. Like like he somehow knows that, right? Yeah. Again, it, it's really amazing to me, but nobody really will call becomes, out the hypocrisy. Yeah, I be, the, and it, I, I tell them all the time, I'm like, look, man, you're if you're going to be free grace, you better be like the most grace, gracey person towards everyone. You bet you should be saying, look, and that's what made me so irritated the other day. Cause like when, when they're being honest, they're going to say like, look, you're not even saved, man, because you haven't actually come to believe the true gospel. You basically have to believe once saved, always saved, or you're not, you're actually trusting in your works. That's what they'll say. They, that's what they actually really believe at the end of the day. They preach cause I listen to them and I have friends that believe that way that are decent people. I'm just saying that ultimately talking just theologically, like if their view is actually right, then it is true when they're honest and say like, look, you don't understand the God. We don't understand the gospel if they're right. Um, we haven't accepted the true gospel. The problem with that is um, you're basically saying like all those other things that God condemns and why people are condemned is not actually a problem. The only problem is you not admitting you can't obey God in any circumstances. And until you admit that, you know, it's like, that's not, I don't think that's the message of the Bible. Jesus didn't say like, just admit you're trash. And it's impossible to obey. So you're condemned for uh, my rules that it's impossible for you to obey. I prefer to look at it more like God is compassionate. He takes things into account. And what he says is bad is actually bad. And um, and like he's in this predicament where it's like, uh, you know, once people, if he just lets it go, it'll just spread like cancer. And so like, like Jamie, not, not to cut you off, but a point that should be mentioned it, to show how important uh, God views about, you know, works and about keeping his commandments. I always bring this point up to them. Think about how long the Bible is. There's like what? Literally 80,000 uh, passages in the Bible or whatever. And the very last page of the Bible, they dedicate two verses in that. Remember, the very last page of the Bible, they could remark on any topic brought up throughout the Bible, but they take two verses in there to remark about how, say, for instance, Revelation 22, 12, I'm coming back and I'm going to reward every man according to his work. And then verse 14, nearly paraphrasing it, but it says, uh, you know, these are they that keep the commandments of God. So if God didn't really care about how believers or whatever are living or acting, why would they take two verses out of the very last page of the Bible and remark on these things out of any other topics that could have been brought up on the Bible's last page? I think that's a hard hitter right there. Yeah, I bring this up to, and I'm, I don't use this. I, I try not to ever to use this verse to like beat people up or be like, try to tell them they're not saved necessarily. But I, I genuinely am like, they start telling me that I'm workspace and they get all bent out of shape. I was on standing for truth thing and they were really just wouldn't let me talk. Wouldn't listen to anything I said. Each one wanted to jump in and be like, Jamie, do you think you keep, Hey, this is the kind of thing that'd be like, Hey, so um, do you think you keep the commandments good enough, Jamie? And I'm just like, or like, do you keep the commandments? And I'm like, 
it's like it's like a gaslighting thing. I'm just like, yeah, it says you if you uh, to know God, you keep his commandments. That's what it says. Now, so let's not pretend like it doesn't say that. And I'll bring up this verse that you just mentioned. I'll pull up. I'm going, OK, look, maybe I, maybe you're right. Maybe I don't get it. Uh, I don't think you're really hearing what I actually believe. I'm just I want to talk about what the text says and how should we read this? And it's like, I don't want to be selective. I want to take all of it in and consider it. And I'll consider like the way you might interpret it to get out of it. Maybe it's legitimate. Maybe it's not. But look, it says, look, blessed are they who do his commandments, that they have the right to enter to the tree. They have right to the tree of life. The tree of life is the thing that gives you eternal life in some sense, right? The imagery that they may enter into the gates of the city, outsider dogs and sorcerers, sexually immoral, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I mean, that is, that's how the Bible ends. Like what now tell me how you understand that. Like, I don't want to pretend like it doesn't say that. That's all I'm saying. Right. And that's a good point. And Jamie, uh, another thing that should be mentioned on these guys is um, I, I was watching them and even Jack Smack, I call him Jack Ass, but I'll watch what I'll say on here. But um, even he did a video recently entitled something along uh, the lines of repentance is uh, of no necessity. These guys also teach that the Bible doesn't teach repentance from sin. When I heard that, I was like, wow, that, that is like the most bizarre thing ever. What do you mean the Bible doesn't teach repentance from sin at all? I mean, there's so many examples in the Bible that show repentance. I'll give an example. If you read um, Luke chapter 24, verse 47, you can pull that up for the audience. Literally mentions repentance from sin. Another good one. If you read, um, what is that scripture? I believe it's um, John 5, 14. Christ told the man uh, to turn from sin, lest a worse thing come upon him. And then the other one, uh, the well, famous the one. John the Baptist, and, uh, one, Lord knows. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, on the whole John the Baptist thing, the, his baptism of repentance, it's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty clear throughout the yeah, Bible. That's, Go that's a good one. That's a good one. But when you bring these up to these dudes, all they can say is, eh, you know, well, you're just relying on your works. It's like, well, why don't we just deal with the verses? Y'all said that there's no repentance from sin and Jesus didn't teach repentance from sin. But I can show multiple examples where not only Christ taught repentance of sin, but so did his apostles. So apparently they're all wrong now. You know, it's it's really bizarre. You know, these guys are like some of the most basic among people I've ever seen. It's just truly shocking to me. Yeah, I I think the um, it's like I I I'm it's unmistakable all the places where or how much or let's say this the issue I have with them is it's just like they're like so hyper focused in on some certain part and not considering we have to look at the circumstances of the situation what the context is right you know like you know the people will be universal with certain texts but they have a setting right like when well let me go to john i want to look at this this i this is what i was asking them the other day it's like if you're going to go to john five right um and it says uh There's a lot going on here as far as like imagery of, of the issue with the Jews here. But where is it where Jesus says, you know, he, he who believes on the son has eternal life. And the thing is, like, I don't disagree with these verses. It's just like, what is it in chapter five when it says? Um, well, yeah, he says, see, if you made well, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So Jesus heals people. He saves them. And then he tells them not to sin. It's just that they're willing to come to him and they know they're they need help. But like. But when he says, um, let's see, he says, he, you know, here, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who has, has sent me has everlasting life. And this is what they'll say. They'll say, has present tense eternal life. And so this is, this is, I do, this is the verse why I say, it's okay to say you've been saved. Like you, the idea that Jesus is saying, like his words are spirit and life. Like you can say that Jesus has redeemed you, but like, it's not just saying it. It's like you've received what Jesus, you know, Jesus is, has done and is doing for you as the Savior. And you should experience that now. I think the Bible is teaching that idea. But like Mike, you said, well, I don't really think you're saved until the resurrection. And I, I actually, in every sense that I think you mean that, I Adventists would agree. You know, you have to endure. You can't, like, the idea would be like you, 
you stay faithful or you stay belie- as a believer and then you receive your actual immortality. Jamie, I got right. a verse for you on that. This is a good one. Yeah. If you read Matthew 24, verse 13, it says, he that endures until the end is the same that shall be saved. 